Welcome back once again to Workshop Friend. Today I'm going to be continuing the work on this MyFord Large Fixed Steady and I'll just give you a little insight into why I'm making that. This is a piece of two and three quarter inch steel which I need to uh, reduce in diameter for part of the length to two and a half inches. Now I'm planning the next operations and what I need to do is to produce the split line here uh, which of course will come on the center line of the pivot. The, the other issue is that actually because of the way I've made this there is a slight malalignment there between the two halves. Uh, reassuringly it's not because the hinge is out of alignment it's just that the thicknesses are not consistent so uh, this lower piece is slightly thicker than the upper piece. Now I could have a go at making that flat now, but I think a better plan would be complete the hinge so that I can use the hinge to clamp this together. And then if I want to reduce this to one width all the way across, I can use that clamping action to hold everything rigidly. So the next operation will be separate the two halves, put the lower half in the mill and produce that hinge line. At this stage the hinge was only roughed out. To get a precise level I took a datum from the center line of the pin in the hinge. I can now confidently machine that surface to the right level. I'm also going to relieve this so that the hinge only makes contact over the pressure area where the clamp comes. This doesn't need to touch, it doesn't need to meet here. It's time to cut the slot in here for the clamping bolt and I've um, centered the end mill by uh, touching off on this side and then coming across to the center. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, clock here to um, open up the slot because this is a 1 8 end mill but I actually need a 5 16 slot. So I'm going to um, use the clock here to come back 31 thou on this side and 31 thou the other side of center line to get the slot to the right width. Well, I was a bit concerned as to how this uh, quarter inch end mill would handle this uh, quite deep slot. Uh, but uh, just taking uh, delicate cuts and working with my uh, up to a stop uh, for the end of the slot, I had no problem whatsoever. So what I'm going to do now is uh, move the table across 62 thou in the other direction to bring the slot to 5 16 width. Go 31 thou in the other direction and lock the table. If you were observant, you would have noticed that the table moved very slightly when I locked it. That's something I'm going to have to look into.
I've reassembled the steady and located an engineer's clamp to hold everything together firmly. And now this is an opportunity to bring uh, both parts to the same thickness. I'm going to do one side and then turn over and do the other side. Having finished the first side, it's all cleaned, turned over, and now we're completing the second side. For the next operation, I need to set the work up on an angle plate, and it needs to be level with the base of the angle plate. So I'm picking up the center of the pin and lining it up with the surface of the clamp. Unlike the base, which is a nice flat surface which I can mount directly on the table, I need this setup for machining the top half. And this is so that I can get the clamping surface level. I'm now machining a 20 thou or half millimeter relief so that the clamping action is only in the area of the bolt. Okay, now we can see that uh, the two halves come together nicely. We've got a clearance there, and the clamping is actually just exactly where the bolt will be. Uh, this should be now circular, or very nearly circular, as far as casting tolerances are concerned. So the next operation is, after deburring, is to put this corresponding slot in this side. And I'll try and get that uh, lined up so that uh, everything is going to be held together nicely by a close fitting bolt that will go in here. So I've measured um, the position of that slot and I've touched off on the rear side of this which is machined and then we're going to come across uh, using the indicator there. I want to make this slot the same width as this one so I'm just using I haven't got slip gauges so I'm just using a drill and some feeler gauges and I can tell that's around about a 5 16th drill plus around about 15 thou so it's time to move the table across another I've calculated 72 thou that's because this uh, quarter inch end mill is cutting a little bit over size so um, I've knocked uh, 5 thou off the distance I want to move across because I want to get a nice um, slot the same size as the other one. So I've estimated that I need to bring the table across uh, 72 thou. So we'll dial that in. I could tell by feeling that the slots did line up very well and I was pleased with the result and I think it was worth the extra effort.
just skimming the top surface of the clasp to provide a nice seating for the bolt head. Now time to mark out the position of the 3 16th diameter hole for the pin. One of those dimensions is critical, so I'm using the marking out table and transferring the dimension from the end face to the side. The other dimension isn't so critical, so I actually did that in the vise with the scale. I centre popped it and then took it over to the drill, drilling and reaming. Okay, we're ready to cut the groove now in the uh, in the simpler casting and I've chosen this one because it lies flat on the table and I've got it square with the axis of the machine this is the finger I've measured it and it's actually an odd size it's uh, it's under three quarters um, I guess it was made from three quarter stock which has been machined down so it's under three quarters so we need to make this to size and the next challenge is to get the center line. So what I initially did was I measured um, halfway across the casting and look for that center line. And when I lined that up with the uh, casting feature here for the for the bolt, the adjusting bolt, uh, this isn't bang in the center. So rather than go for the center of this casting across the diameter here, I'm going to go for the center of this. And I think this is the kind of problem that you have with castings. You've got to decide uh, where you're going to, uh, which particular features you're going to base your datum on. So I decided that the center line of this is important because that's where the adjusting bolt's going to go. And if this ends up being slightly off center, I don't think that will make any difference to its function. So I've picked that center up now and we're going to open this slot up. I'm going to rough it out with this. Uh, bring it approximately to depth and then we're going to put another um, end mill in there to tidy up the slot to the exact size. So I'm doing all my roughing out with a carbide uh, insert end mill and then I will uh, change over to a regular end mill for finishing to improve the surface finish. The base casting is slightly more complicated because there are two fingers and because they're at an angle, but uh, I found it reasonably easy to set up and uh, it was actually much quicker than I thought. So much the same process, I'm going to do one finger and then rotate the casting and then do the other finger, following exactly the same procedure. I really am impressed with these castings which I have produced in Pakistan. They are uh, good quality, easy to machine, no hard spots and very few indications um, that the mould hasn't been filled thoroughly.
So this is where we got to at the end of video number three. The slots for the fingers are cut and incidentally I customized each of the slots to fit, fit the fingers because they're all slightly different sizes. So I'm going to have to number them much like the jaws fit in a lathe chuck. We've got the hinge, we've got the body all nicely completed and I'm very pleased that this lines up. Uh, we've got the features in here for the clasp assembly. Of course I've got to make the pin that goes in there and the, the swiveling bolt which goes in there and clasps it together. We also need to bore the holes in here for the, for the clamping bolts. They also need to be countersunk on the other side. And uh, one other feature, I th I'm going to try and get hold of some uh, blacking agents so that we can uh, blacken the steel parts here to um, uh, fit in with existing uh, blackened components. And of course, as I mentioned in an earlier video, I'm going to use these parts interchangeably from the other original Myford fixed steady. And that includes the clamp, which uh, goes underneath. So next video, as well as finishing the machining, I'm also going to paint it and hopefully test it. So thanks for joining me. I hope you'll join me for the next video.